Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to do a discounted cash flow valuation on Urban One stock. I don't know if you've been following Urban One, but Robinhood users have been snapping up Urban One unlike anything I've seen in a while. If you take both the A shares and the D shares together, you've got more than 69,000 Robinhood accounts that have added Urban One in the last week. That's almost twice as many as the second most popular stock, Ideonomics. So let's jump into a discounted cash flow valuation of Urban One to get a sense for how the value of a share of Urban One compares to the price of a share of Urban One. So here's how I do my discounted cash flow valuations. Uh, I find the year one free cash flow, which is 60 million, and that's something I got from Morningstar. Now, if you go to Morningstar, you go to the bottom here and look at the cash flow section. Free cash flow is $0.06 billion, which is $60 million. So that's what I've got here for year one free cash flow. This is in the millions. Uh, to get excess capital or the cash balance of Urban One. I go over here and I look at the balance sheet uh, and this is the first quarter of 2020 70 million in cash. So that's what I put in here 70 million. Uh, in terms of the growth rate I used the I, I kind of looked at the operating income growth over the last three years, it's approximately 10%. You see we go from 80 million, 90 million, 100 million, uh, and the trailing 12 months is 110 million. So I, I average about 10% for the operating income growth rate. You can see here the revenue is pretty stagnant. So you know I think I'm being a little bit optimistic uh, with this 10% growth rate, but but I'm okay with that. Growth rate, basically years one through 10 are 10%. Sometimes years one through five is different from years six through 10. I'm just putting in 10% for all 10 years. Uh, discount rate, I'm using 10%. That's kind of the rule of thumb I use for my discounted cash flow valuations. And then the multiple value, the multiple for the terminal value, uh, essentially what that is, is the free cash flow in year 10. So you're assuming you can sell the business for uh, 10 times the free cash flow in year 10. And that gives us a sale value of $1.4 billion. Of course, we have to discount that back at a 10% discount rate to get these present values. So if I sum all of those up, the free cash flows in year one through 10, and then this terminal sale value, uh, after I discount those back to present value, I get one, uh, $1,091,000,000 for the present value of future cash flows. You add the cash, subtract the debt, and then you get a value for the equity, okay, which is $221,000,000. Um, to get this shares outstanding, I went to Robinhood. I entered the stock ticker UONE, which is Urban One uh, A class shares. And I find the current share price, which is 3331, and the market cap, which is $1.65 billion. So to get the shares outstanding, you take the market cap, $1.65 billion, divide it by the current price. $33.31 and you get 49 and a half million shares outstanding. So you get value for equity, you got the shares outstanding uh, and that's how you can get a value per share. You just take this equity divided by shares outstanding and you get $4.46 which is kind of the value per share that I came up with based on you know these numbers. And, and this kind of methodology, methodology for calculating the value of Urban One. 
Now this price, $4.46, you could actually buy Urban One for $4.46 only six days ago on June 15th. Uh, of course, the price now over the weekend on June 21st is $33.31, which is seven and a half times the value that I came up with. So you can see this, based on what I'm looking at, this stock, Urban One, is really overvalued or overpriced. Um, and the, the way I see that is, or, or what I think happened here, there's actually 25 times fewer shares of Class A stock with Urban One than there is Class D stock. Now the Class D stock is U-O-N-E-K, okay? Now what I think happened here, there were some experienced traders that bought a large portion of the shares outstanding for Urban One Class A shares. Now there's only like 1.6 million shares outstanding for this U-O-N-E ticker. Now, so when you had the experienced traders buying a large portion of the shares outstanding, you know, the, the price shot up because there was a squeeze. Uh, and then I think they, they, they saw that there were these limited number of shares uh, and that when the price increased, there would be inexperienced traders piling in just based on the price increase. Uh, and I think they were also probably riding the trending support for African-American oriented businesses. Urban One is a media company that primarily targets the African-American demographic. So, you know, if, if that was indeed uh, what these experienced traders were trying to do, uh, it, it seems to have worked out phenomenally. Um, that, that's a seven and a half times increase in less than a week is, is pretty phenomenal. So, you know, I'd be pretty nervous if I was holding this stock based on the valuation. I don't know, maybe it'll get pushed higher from, from traders piling in. Nobody really knows. Um, but it seems like an incredibly risky stock to own right now, at least from a valuation standpoint. Now, I'm a value investor. I am not uh, a technical analysis trader. So, you know, maybe you are, and maybe you see something here that indicates the price is gonna continue going up. Uh, that that's not how I invest so from a purely valuation perspective you know I would be getting out of this stock uh, immediately uh, but um, yeah it's also really interesting just the difference between the A and the D shares um, it seems like the only difference that I can see is the voting rights and usually you know the price between different classes of stock when the only difference is voting rights it's a very small difference uh, if you want to look at the difference in another company so berkshire berkshire hathaway a shares have voting rights and berkshire hathaway b shares do not have voting rights and i think the price difference between those uh, in terms of purely like a price to value um, kind of situation, it's only a percent or two uh, difference in price uh, in terms of, you know, if you take into account the market cap and the number of shares outstanding, the price difference is very small. Obviously, the absolute price difference is, is huge, I think. You know, you're looking at like $275,000 for an A share versus something like $175 for a B share. But that, that doesn't really tell you anything. You've got to look at, you know, the, the number of shares. You have to factor in the number of shares outstanding as well in order to compare apples to apples uh, with A shares to B shares. But, you know, Urban One, it's, it's a fascinating story uh, just in the last week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. My sense is that these A shares are, are going to come crashing back down to reality. Um, back down to around $5 per share is, is what I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, it'll be interesting to um, kind of keep an eye on it and see, see what happens. 
So that's all I got, guys. I just wanted to do a, a quick analysis on Urban One stock. Uh, let me know if, if you've bought it recently or if it's on your watch list. I'm curious to hear from you uh, if, if you've been looking into it and what your insights are on Urban One as a business and Urban One, the stock. So that's all I got, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care.